Hello, welcome back to Offstream Magazine, the podcast. And here you are again today for the second working group episode where we're going to have four other working groups. We're going to have the general meeting working group, the secretary group, then, of course, your favorite offspring and open science working groups. So, And, and we're going to have this very interesting flipped interview where Ali and Adrian are going to interview Nico and me. So stay tuned for that. And without any further dilly-dally, let's get straight into the first discussion with Irene from the General Meeting Working Group. Uh, hi, thanks for joining us, Irene. Uh, you're here representing the General Meeting Group, right? So yeah. can you give a quick introduction about yourself and the working group, the General Meeting Working Group? Sure. So my name is Irene. And I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Social Law and Social Policy. And I'm uh, here on behalf of the General Meeting Working Group. Um, yeah, that's all. So uh, what does the General Meeting Working Group actually do? So actually, we the main task is to organize the yearly general meeting. And normal condition, uh, we would have to get in touch with hotels and sponsors for accommodation and food and provide a nice social program alongside the meeting. Of course, this year, the current situation uh, obliged us to turn the event in an online meeting, and that took away some of the most interesting work, but it's still nice organization work. Okay, so maybe uh, as a starting point, it would be great to know what actually is the general meeting. Uh, maybe could you just uh, tell us... Uh who's going to be there, and what are people actually meeting about? Sure. So the general meeting is the yearly meeting of the PhD Net, uh, which is the network that um, puts together all PhD students in the Max Planck Society. And it's really important because uh, everybody can there, for, there at the meeting participate and mm -hmm. engage in the, in, the, um, in the life of the PhD students across the whole society and also really discuss mm -hmm. the matters that are important to our lives. Um, and yeah, uh, that's why we need someone to organize it every year. <laughs> yes, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So how many people are in the general meeting working group? Because I could imagine it's a lot of work. And I mean, I heard this year it's going to be online. So it's something completely new. Um, and yeah, how many people do you need to uh, make this work? So at the moment, the most active members are five. But of course, the number of active members increases as the general meeting approaches. So, so far it's been fine, uh, but we will need some more help in coordinating the Zoom sessions and in general participating to the organization really during the, meetings and so, during the meeting as such. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned you have to do a lot of coordination. So how is the working group actually organized? So do you have like deep, different people doing specific tasks or is it more of a whoever has time does certain things well actually we have two main coordinators those are victoria and daniel uh, and mm -hmm. they are really managing a lot of stuff and they also keep the contacts with the steering group and with the general administration of the max Planck society which is really important and they are then distributing the tasks to different people in the group so they are basically doing the managing of the tasks mm -hmm. but uh, do you have different uh, like sort of tasks assigned to people already or is it just coordinating based on whoever is available Mainly we have uh, tasks assigned, but of course, if then you're not available for your particular task on that day, you can also switch. Mm -hmm. so okay, it's so there's free. a lot of flexibility exactly. involved in it. Okay, exactly. that's good to know. And how much time would you say do you spend roughly uh, working uh, for the general meeting? Uh, yeah, again, this is something that increases... Uh, as the general meeting approaches so so far we've really only met a few times and online uh, mm -hmm. because of corona uh, and most of the work is done like by email so that mm -hmm. takes away some time but not that much time um, so well the number of meeting and the amount of time is going it's going to be more like really starting from the next days okay mm -hmm. uh, so what was it roughly till now was it like an hour per week or uh... More. Yeah, maybe maybe an hour per week and maybe for the two coordinators slightly more, but okay. yeah, probably not on average. Okay, so basically you can expect like until the month before the meeting just to have like maybe a meeting once every week or so. Or what even once every month before oh, okay. before before the like before summer there's really not mm -hmm. much to do. Okay. So mm -hmm. After summer it gets 
gets more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, coming to the next point that we wanted to discuss, it's just that the general meeting usually happens at different places each year, and usually these local hubs form these teams which coordinate it, right? So, for example, last year it was in Göttingen, and the students of the Göttingen hub formed the whole team. And this year, it's it was supposed to be in Munich, but because of COVID, it's virtual. So the Munich hub people formed this team. So, is it so? Do you have any clue as to where it's going to happen next in the, in the next year, or is that only decided in the general meeting itself? So it is decided in the general meeting itself because basically the people who volunteer to be members of the general meeting working group get to the, choose the location. And of mm -hmm. course, there is some informal consulting before where would we like to do it and who would volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, I think last year there was another hub uh, interested in organizing the one for like next year, but I mm -hmm. do not remember exactly okay. if that was then decided or not. Okay, so basically if you want to join the working group, then uh, you also have to uh, be in this hub where actually the meeting will take place to some extent. Uh, that's not a mandatory requirement, okay. uh, especially now after Corona, we've seen that you can always do work from a different mm -hmm. location. So I don't know, maybe if it's possible to do it uh, in person next year, maybe there's going to be to work to do like contacting the hotels or contacting mm -hmm. the sponsor that you can also do from home, even if you live on the other side of Germany. So. Okay, that's true. Okay, so are there any specific requirements? to join the working group mm, mm, i wouldn't say so so of course you have to be interested in <laughs> in getting in getting this meeting organized and but except for interest and enthusiasm i would say of course if you're part of the hub it can be easier also if you have mm. to meet in person but i wouldn't say that's necessary again okay, okay. and so where um Do you have like some information online already on uh, like uh, maybe where to join and uh, what work is being done like, I or guess, is it more uh, than published during the general meeting or? Uh, I guess there is a, a website on the PhD net, uh, um, a web page on the PhD net website, but um, I don't think there are many information on the group as such because Basically, the, groups organi the group organizes the general meeting and that changes every year. So mm -hmm. I don't think there are going to be many information, but there is for sure our email address. So it's possible to contact us also to know what the group does if it, someone is interested. Okay, so basically it's a mailing list just for the general meeting work group. Uh, yeah. So if you're interested or you have questions, uh, you can just write them. Exactly. Okay. What is your motivation actually for joining it? Because uh, I think it's a lot of work and you have to do your PhD on the side as well. So uh, why did you uh, join the uh, work group? So, well, the very first motivation was the idea of organizing a meeting in Munich because mm -hmm. this is a town I really enjoy and I really wanted PhD students from the whole Max Planck Society to be able mm -hmm. to get to know it and really to live the Bavarian life for a few days. Unfortunately, this cannot be the case now, but the motivation still stays of organizing a cool meeting where everybody can feel comfortable to speak up, motivated and engaging in contributing to the net. And I've been studying law, so I know democratic participation is very important. And <laughs> I, w I feel yes. like organizing the meeting would foster that uh, in the PhD net. So. Okay, yeah, I that's completely true. agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting motivated people is always uh, difficult. Exactly. And uh, yeah. I think you guys are doing a great job and the general meeting this year is going to be from November 4th to November 6th. And uh, I think the link's been floating around through the PhDNet mailing list. So yes. if you've received one, please make sure to register and please make sure to attend. These guys put a lot of effort and work yeah. into this. I mean, the links and, will also be in the description, uh, I think, of this uh, podcast episode. And yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope everything's going to work out with uh, the online thing. I mean, it's going to be I mean, difficult to organize, I think. So I'm, yeah, wish you all the best. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. Good luck. And thanks a lot for joining us today. It was really nice to talk to you about uh, the, the way the general meeting group is structured. Yes. Thank you very much for inviting me. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, now at another part of this episode, we have uh, Andrea here with us. So uh, can you maybe give us a quick introduction to yourself and uh, which working group you're part of? Yes, of course. So hi, my name is Andrea. I'm uh, uh, of the MPI of Biochemistry in Munich and I'm part of the secretary group. And yeah. How long have you been part of the secretary group so far? So I joined after the last uh, general meeting I got. When I heard mm -hmm. uh, the presentation of the secretary group there, I thought, yeah, this might be a cool group to join. And yeah, so then I joined. Uh, can you perhaps uh, tell us what the secretary group does? Yes. So the secretary group, the main um, task is to organize the elections of the external representatives. So every institute has, uh, is represented by external and or internal ex um, representatives. And um, yeah, so the external representative, the election procedure is very well defined in the um, PhD net statutes. So we are helping the institutes by um, carrying out the uh, elections and yeah, helping them to be properly represented. Okay, nice. So how many people are you in the secretary group? I could imagine that, I mean, it's a lot of effort because there's like, I think, more than 80 institutes in coordinating all of that. Uh, yeah, it takes quite a lot of time. Yeah, that's true. So now uh, we are like five um, members in the secretary group, so including our general secretary, which is uh, Julia this year. And uh, But we have, for example, Liana, she's also kind of a backup um, member of the secretary group. And uh, yeah, as you said, we have 83 institutes in uh, Germany and also outside of Germany. And um, yeah, the institutes are divided in these uh, three sections, the biomedical section, the CPT section and the uh, humanities. And um, the way we coordinated it now is that we have basically one person is responsible for one section. So we have um, three people. And then uh, Julia, as the general secretary, was um, like supervising actually um, everything basically. And uh, we had one person who was always like jumping and could help out if it was just uh, too much work. And then we could, um, she was helping us out with the election. That sounds great. So uh, you already touched a bit on how you guys are organized, but. Uh... Can you give me a context on how often do you meet to discuss this and how often do you have uh, meetings with each other? Yes, so um, we normally meet once a month. So in the beginning of um, this year, we met in person when it was still possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were all coming together and then we had a very good introduction into how the election process is working and how we actually use this uh, the Lime survey tool um, that we use to carry out the election. And then we had, yeah, every month we had meetings online and uh, we were discussing problems that we had or um, Julia gave, an, gave us an update about what is happening in the steering group. And yeah, so it's not too much, but it was always very nice to see the people again. Okay, yeah, for sure. I mean, and getting like a general introduction, I think is quite helpful in the beginning when you're new to the group. So that's just actually a, sounds pretty nice. Um, so how much time would you say do you roughly spend uh, or um, doing work for the um, secretary group? So this really depends on uh, how many institutes you have that are currently have to run an election. So you um, normally permanently have to keep track of the institutes and you need to see so which institute is coming next, um, which uh, representative has to um, have a new election, and then you need to write to the institute and tell them, hey, your term is almost over, so we would like to remind you that you have to uh, run new elections. And um, yeah, so it really depends if you have like, two or three institutes that have to have elections at the same time. And then it's a bit of more work, but in general, it's not too much, actually. Okay. So what exactly do you do? So how do you communicate with all the institutes? Is everything run through email or you do you call them? 
No, so everything is by email. So you just this is also a very good point of the secretary group, I think, because it really improves your email uh, communication. So you really learn how to um, put or precisely express what you want to say in a short email. So uh, and also sometimes some institutes are not responding immediately. So you need to politely ask again if they maybe could. <laughs> Or if they, um, yeah, what's just going on? And um, yeah, so, but you never call if everything is on. Because okay, so you kind of need to push them a bit uh, to do their work. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I can imagine that's a lot of back and forth and a lot of uh, writing emails. And, you know, you have to be constantly active. So how do you stay motivated to do all of this? Well, uh, so for me personal, it's uh, not such a big thing. I'm actually, so because I just, I really like to organize stuff. And um, for me, it was always a very nice uh, change from my work because I'm, I'm working in the lab. And then sometimes, yeah, just everything goes wrong in the lab. And then you could always go back to the secretary group and check again. So see who is next or oh, uh, which institute didn't reply? Can I maybe write an email again? And then, um, so most of the time, all these, um, the people are super nice and, and they are always happy that um, there's someone that can support them in running the elections and that just knows how the pr process is being done. So, um, yeah, it was always, uh, for me, <laughs> very nice to, to have this that I could always just do at the end of the day, just mm. check again what, okay. what needs to be done. Yeah. So basically it's like the people, the, so the PhD reps, the previous ones, they are usually helpful uh, and they also want to get it done or like finish their, um, I guess, um, their terms. Thanks. Um, mm. And uh, so it's kind of rewarding to have work like with motivated people and you get like steps done. <laughs> So it's not like research where everything exactly. can fail. Yes, exactly. So you have a uh, you have a good result at the end, and everybody is happy, and they appreciate your work and your help, and mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah, get a lot of great. yeah appreciation appreciation afterwards. Yeah, that sounds nice. So, uh, are there any specific requirements? to join the group other than motivation. I'm sure we've talked about motivation a lot in these past few working group uh, interviews. So, so uh, I didn't have any idea what to expect when I joined the secretary group. I didn't really, I never run an election before. I didn't really know how the, that there is such a defined process. Everything is written, um, written down in the statutes. I didn't really know that the statutes exist. So I think um, there are actually no requirements. I think personally, it really helps if you are an um, organized person, if you like to organize stuff, if you like to write emails, and if you're responsible and reliable so that you really keep track of all the institutes and make sure that all of them are properly represented, or at least you try your best. And um, so I think these are, yeah, just that you have a good time management, like these skills of this are certainly of help if you are if you have this. But otherwise, um, also with the Lyme survey, you don't need any requirements. We had a super good introduction and okay. Yeah. Um. Do you? Uh. Can you take like a week off at some point? Because I mean, if you have to be in constant contact with other people, then and you need to push them to do their stuff. Is it? not possible to uh, go on a vacation for a week or two uh, i don't know in summer or so this is absolutely possible so uh, we also had a shared calendar where everybody um, just write hey i'm on holiday for this week and uh, we also have an own cloud um, folder so we share everything so everyone can see which um, institute has an election coming up or which institute is running election at, at the moment. And as I said, we were five people. So we had basically two backup people that can jump. So if you say, hey, I'm not here, but I have this election coming up, then there's always someone who can say, of course, I can jump in because we share everything. And yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that sounds great. So where can I find more information about the secretary group? Um, so you can just look on the PhDNet website. We have a um, site or a page there as well. And yeah, we also have this uh, general secretary or the secretary um, email address that you can always text to. And if you have questions, mm-hmm. contact that. And for the listeners of this episode, you probably already heard uh, Julia talking about her experience as general secretary secretary in one of the steering group episodes. So if you didn't check that out, please go check that out right now. We'll wait for you to do that. Just kidding. We're not going to wait, but uh, we're going to thank Andrea for giving her time to us and answering all of our you know, hard hitting questions. And uh, thanks a lot for joining us. And I'm sure you're looking for a great recruitment session in this coming general meeting. Yeah. Yeah, it was great to have you on hi everyone and welcome back to this episode of offspring magazine the podcast i'm your host allison lewis joining me today co-hosting is adrian welcome very nice to be here thank you very much and today we will be hearing from continuing with the working group podcast series and today we will hear from the offspring magazine work group coordinator and the coordinator of the open science working group hello srinat and nico these guys should sound familiar to our regular listeners how are you guys doing today i'm perfectly fine yeah good it's nice to be here in a different role once <laughs> well, thank goodness <laughs> so uh i suppose we'll get right down to it um Serena, I guess uh, people are used to half of what you do running the podcast, but could you give us a quick introduction to, I guess, who you are and tell us a bit about the work group you're coordinating? All right. So if people don't know me already, I'm Srinat. I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Heart and Lung Research in tiny little Bad Nauheim, close to Frankfurt. And uh, so for my PhD... I work with uh, the heart and development, but for the PhD net, the work for which I'm more well known for, I'm actually the coordinator of Offspring Magazine, the working group. And of course, I host the the podcast, but uh, you guys know about that already, right? I think they should. We're a little bit familiar. That sounds about right. Anyway, so... It feels very weird to be on this side of the receiving end of questions. So I may be a bit weird just to clarify this for all the listeners. So more you have than to answer the questions. Yeah, they're finally, Sorry, know, they're finally knowing the true you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm much better off, you know, jumping in with little questions from there and from <laughs> time to time rather than answering them at length. But anyway, now they know. Did, that, did I answer your question, Ali? Yeah, I mean, the magazine could you, part. Yeah, could you talk a little bit about like what the magazine is putting out or what they were? Oh on? yeah, thanks for uh, reminding me about that. So the magazine team is uh, the important science communication team of the PhD Net. So we have a huge array of people working for us in different uh, aspects of the magazine. For example. Every year during the general meeting, we release the version of the magazine. So in case you guys haven't checked it out, there's going to be a new version coming out this year during the general meeting. And for this, we have articles which are being published by people written by us or written by different people, which we edit and then publish as a part of the offspring blog. And so this is a year-round process, and we use the articles which come out here as a part of the magazine, which comes out at the end of each year. So we have like people who are working with the layout, people who work with writing the articles, people who are interested in the design aspect of things. And of course, the podcast is a part of the magazine team as well. So offspring magazine team as a whole. So yeah, Sounds... I hope that was more wholesome of an answer than my previous one. Yes, thank you. Sounds very cool if I uh, say so completely objectively. 
<laughs> I, I sense the objectivity in your uh, <laughs> I mean, Nico, you're familiar with that as well, but that's not what you're here for today, right? Today you're going to be talking to us a little bit more about the Open Science Working Group, is that correct? Exactly, uh, yes. So I'm actually also the coordinator of the Open Science Work Group, which was only established last year because uh, the steering group decided and also the uh, PhD reps uh, at the general meeting that it's important actually to know about open science. And so this, uh, this group was started last year. And this year I took over as the coordinator. And yeah, so what we're do <clears throat> doing in the open science work group is basically try to communicate open science. So what exactly it is, right? Uh, so we conducted a survey last year. And uh, in the survey, we found out that um, a lot of people actually heard the term open science before. And they kind of know what it is but not really if you have, go into details so that's why this year we are trying to figure out a way uh, how to um, get the knowledge to the people so and also we want to convince them that they should do open science because it's also beneficial for the individual so um, making sure that they know the in incentives and all of that of course. yeah actually if i could follow up on that because the way you phrased it kind of brings to mind so you, you said bring the knowledge to the people which for open science kind of in your role means two things right because it means convincing scientists to bring that knowledge to scientists but also to convince scientists to bring that knowledge to others yes so could exactly. you give maybe some more details on kind of the the operations of the working group over time, you know, what you guys get guys kind of do day to day, week to week. So we are working on several projects. So also last year we started this in, or restarted the initiative of the Open Science Ambassadors, where we held a conference when it was still possible, and we could uh, gather like I think it was 60, 70 people from like fifty different institutes uh, to act as like a kind of person, a contact person for um, people that want to know more about open science at their respective institutes. And so we gathered them, we had uh, workshops, we had talks, and then and a lot of discussions about open science and how to um, introduce the topic to other people that want to know more about it. And so this was uh, started restarted last year. And then this year, um, I mean, in the beginning, it was a bit difficult to get started. Um, but now we're having like regular meetings. And right now we're deciding on a strategy to basically, as I mentioned, educate uh, the people that are interested. And we're working together with the general administration and also the Max Planck Digital Library on a couple of things. Um, but um, yeah, we're still in the beginning of uh, figuring out what exactly we should do. And so I wanted to follow up with Srinath because Adrian brought up about the 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 working time and, and Nico, you mentioned the pandemic and how that had impacted your ability to meet and organize. And so I wanted to pose to Srinath kind of the same question. How how do you guys organize in the magazine group and has and has the pandemic had any effect on your ability to do your work? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So to be perfectly clear, we were a 100% digital workspace, work environment, way before the pandemic made it cool. The future! <laughs> yeah. So this, I was very proud last year when I was presenting the working group at the general meeting. We, we boasted the fact that we have all our meetings online already because we never had the need to travel anywhere. And we could always do our coordination remotely with our monthly Skype meetings. Although now Skype's been devoured by Zoom. So now we use <laughs> other platforms for meetings. But, you know, the concept is the same. We have more or less monthly meetings where we discuss the articles that are going to come out in that month or the time frame. And then we have uh, like sort of awareness month initiatives where this year actually we had an open science awareness the yes. campaign called the summer of open science so that's why we had a like a very joint effort with nico and me this year with both the magazine and the podcast and everything so in general we usually try to keep you know weekly number of hours limited so you know for an average uh person who's doing his phd or her phd they would probably try to spend like two to three hours maximum per week 
on this if they want to be extremely dedicated to it. But if not, even an hour of work per week in this direction for the PhD net would actually be very well appreciated. And uh, we have a lot of people who are like really sort of giving, chiming in with small bits of information spread out over different parts of a week, which actually comes together eventually later on with I new mean, ideas for. But if I could pick stuff. up on that, I mean, you say you have a lot of people. What kind of numbers are we talking? I mean, if you had to estimate mm -hmm. how many people are involved in the offspring, what would you say? Yeah. So, so, so if I look historically, yeah. so the, for the past couple of years, we always had around eight active members. Recently, we sort of had a hit in that because we've had like six or seven active members, but like four really active working towards a certain goal, for example. I'm, I'm counting the podcast team as well. So you guys, I'm counting you as active <laughs> members of us. From so there's four of us so, right the here. The four people <laughs> in yeah. this digital yeah. room. Exactly. So, but we really do need a lot of talent or dedicated people to join us and try to help us in our, you know, promoting science communication because I, I kind of feel that open science and science communication go hand in hand because, you know, you need open science as well as you need someone to communicate the science to well, I mean, people the, anyway. Nico, how does that compare then for open science? Yeah, I mean, basically outreach is one thing or one part of open science. And I think it's actually quite nice that we're collaborating with the offspring group uh, on this topic um, because, I mean, they know uh, they already have some infrastructure built up with the magazine and also, as far as I remember, some connections to the Max Planck magazine as well. And now with the podcast, uh, we were able to also interview people like Peter Suber, who is um, one of the advocates for open uh, open access, and he has done a lot of uh, uh, work in this direction. So it's nice to get the information out, and the podcast medium, I think, is a um, good option there to just uh, give information to people that are interested. So it was it just made sense that we, uh, yeah, collaborated on in this. Yeah, just to add on to Nico's point, the Offspring magazine is actually more of a platform for mm -hmm. other people to use. For example, let me just give a, another example with the working group, for example, the survey group. When they do the survey, the results of the survey are published and as well as an article about the survey results written in the Offspring magazine every year. So this sort of acts as a platform for the different aspects in which we can reach people or we can reach the PhDs of the Max Planck Society. So basically you're saying like, what comes out in the magazine might not just be written by the six to eight people you describe as being active members of the group. It can really be anyone doing their PhD in the Max Planck exactly. Society. Anyone. Or... Yeah, anyone. So, and we also have, for example, people conducting different conferences, of course, not during the pandemic, but last year we had a lot of different conferences which were happening. And we have people writing up little sort of notes about what this conference was about, how they organized it and what the major outcomes of it were. And all of these things also get published in the magazine as a part of outreach. So the magazine is not just for articles, which are that can be opinion pieces, but they can also be for outreach for certain kinds of structures and certain kinds of events. I mean, the way you describe it is kind of as a platform for PhDNet. Yeah. A communication platform, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So... It sounds like there's a lot of different aspects to this, you know, right? Like writing, hosting a podcast, using a lot of technology to meet. What motivates you to put in the time and stay so active in the working group? Well, I would say it's primarily the fact that we see the need for such a thing. And we see that when such a demand is met, there's very good reception for it. So it's like when we see that people are actually interested in listening to the podcast to try to know what we have to say or the people that we want to interview, they're, 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 they're curious. And this curiosity is met by us trying to sort of work more in the direction. So it's like, shall I put it this way? Like the content drives the ratings and the ratings drive the content. So it's it's like a like a virtuous cycle like I put it in my mind. So that's what motivates me every day. And I kind of feel I really want to have people as motivated as I am, or maybe even more to take over some aspects of this, uh, you know, magazine and 
For example, like you, Ellie, you're hosting the podcast now. So I, I'm. I thought you might have been referring to me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So we. So I find this already extremely helpful, and uh, we're really looking for people to fill in certain roles like this. It's very fun. I can confirm. <laughs> okay, and that's objective, by the way. <laughs> Totally no unbiased. Bias <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I can definitely um, agree with what Srina just said here. It's just nice working together with motivated people. And you know the goal you're working towards. I mean, uh, on the one hand, side, science communication. And for me, I guess it's more open science. It, it's just a goal that is worth it, I would say, to put in time. And um, yeah, seeing how the maybe scientific landscape might change also for the better is like, a, I guess, positive side effect. I mean, although, I mean, this change is always slow. Uh, yeah. So, so, so a part of what motivates you is, is potentially like enacting change in yeah. open science. Yes. And I mean, another thing, of course, that I, I mean, um, for the open science uh, work group, at least, is that you do get to meet a lot of people that are active in open science. So, for example, in the Max Planck Society, there's Gerard uh, or Gera Maya. I, I always forget how to pronounce his name, I have to admit. Um, but he is like a director that was also leading the um, project deal negotiations. And then there's also people from the general administration who just know a, really a lot about open science science and also about open access so they've been with this whole open access movement kind of already so which started in 2003 uh, i think it was in berlin uh, and they've been with it the whole time so it's really nice to talk with these people and uh, yeah see how how far we've come already well and i suppose something like accessibility impacts us quite frequently trying to access papers so it's very close to home for you i bet exactly yeah i mean so I suppose to wrap up, um, how do people join the working groups? For example, the Offspring magazine. How would people join if they wanted to? So, yeah. So they can write to us at uh, offspring.magazine at phdnet.mpg.de. We're always looking out for people. Also, if you just want to contribute an article that you've written and you want us to publish it, we'd be very happy to have you there and otherwise just go to the phcnet website and you can find the offspring blog on the outreach tab and you can also find the podcast and you can find a lot of these links on the phcnet website and i think that's like the easiest way to get in touch with anyone from the phcnet not just offspring yeah, exactly. So, and also I would like to add that I think our emails are also online uh, on the PhDNet website. So what I started to do was just give people like an introduction. Like I just email them. We have a quick, uh, I don't know, 50 minute, half an hour meeting. And I just tell them what the group is actually doing. And just to kind of uh, get them somewhat interested, seeing what their uh, ideas are uh, and knowing why they are interested in the topic, right? I mean, also, it's just, it's not, um, it's not like you sign a contract and say, okay, now I will work 10 hours every week uh, for this work group. It's you can just join for a bit and see if you like it, if you can manage beside your PhD, because I mean, your PhD is still your main work, like you should finish that. Um, and then if you have additional time, of course, it's nice if you join the work groups. I mean, also, sometimes doing the work for the work groups, not just your PhD, sometimes can be very rewarding. It can help you relax from the main work that you have to do with a little additional work in a different direction. So, you know, it's like the, it's like, it's one of these things that really gives you a lot of personal satisfaction, which sometimes your PhD may not give you, you know, it, it's, it's more rewarding in a short term basis just to, you know, put it out there <laughs> the uh, the goals are a bit more uh short-term tangible achievable in a little amount of time not four or five years yes. well and it broadens your perspective as a scientist i think that's a word valuable part you know getting being able to work in organizations that are adjacent or tangential to science is really valuable yeah and also like something which uh, if i remember correctly that uh paula stefan was telling us that uh if so apparently different granting organizations require PIs to host podcasts nowadays. Really? And this was something which we found super funny. 
So if you have some experience, maybe it helps there as well. So I'm just we're all ahead there. of the game. We're gonna get jobs right after the PhD is totally employable. Yeah, <laughs> you talk to I'm old PIs, joking. and they say that it's easy, just as easy as it used to be. <laughs> now we have all to host a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you know, now it's podcasts. Anyway. It used to be unicycles, but you know the times they change. <laughs> or bicycles, like Tony. Yeah, Hyman exactly. Used to, we yeah. talked a bit about bicycles with Tony. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been weird and wonderful doing uh, this little reversal here. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yes, it was nice to be here. So I just wanted to say that uh, please feel free to, you know, look at the general meeting of the PhDNet because it's coming up from November 4th to November 6th. And we're going to have a lot of different working groups trying to recruit members and you can and you do not have to be an external or an internal representative to apply for any of these working groups you can just apply and also you have a lot of opportunity in terms of networking with different people and different roles and if you keep if you've already listened to the steering group episodes please make sure that you you know you try to understand what these roles are and if please feel feel motivated to apply for these roles because i think it's an excellent chance to network with different people anyway i think that's going to be my last ramble for tonight (laughs) nico do you have something you want to leave us off with you can ramble in compensation (laughs) for my rambling Well, no, I mean, if you're interested, uh, yeah, just mail me and uh, I'll give you an intro to the Open Science Work Group, I guess. Same thing goes for offspring. So a man of few words. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> only when Comparatively. Yeah. yeah. Only Relatively when he's being interviewed. When he's being interviewed, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. The moment the camera's turned around. <laughs> all right guys this was this was wonderful thanks a lot for doing this Ali and Nathan. thank you very yeah. much for talking to it's us it's so weird i didn't think it would be so weird like ha- one thing that i want to add is whoever joins these teams in the future mm. please make sure you're very collaborative with the other teams because it's very important that we have very good communication amongst ourselves and between the different groups and you know the steering group is here to help you as well as the working groups are here to get the work done. That's why they're called working groups. So, you know, just feel free to collaborate and contribute and communicate. And yeah. any more C words? I, I was going to say, you need you need at least one more. Yeah, Confess. Conf- no. <laughs> Con- confront really your fears. Weird. Confront your fears. There we go. All right, there you go. All right, so with that, we've come to the end of this uh rather fragmented episode of Officer Magazine, the podcast. If you'd like to give us any feedback, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to write to us at offspring.podcasts at phcnet.mpg.de. With the Officer Magazine, the podcast is hosted by Shantram Ramkwar, Nicola Herman, Alison Lewis, Adrian La Hoya, and Sandra Fendel. It's produced by the Max Planck PhD Net and the Science Communication Working Group known as the Offspring Magazine. The intro outro music is composed by Shantram Ramkumar, and the pre intro jingles composed by Gustavo Carrizzo. And since the situation is getting really dire nowadays, please stay safe, stay healthy, practice safe social distancing, and please wear a mask, it really helps. And the general meeting is right around the corner in two days from now. It's from Wednesday to Friday this week. So if you're attending the general meeting and you're a regular listener to the podcast, feel free to hit me up and we can discuss more details if you want. Anyway... With that, I'd like to thank everyone for listening and thank all the guests of the episode for taking time out of their busy schedule to appear for this podcast. Until next week, then, stay safe and stay strong. And we have an exciting new episode coming up next week. With that, I bid you adieu and see you all next week. Bye.